everyone and welcome back to Video Games and Consoles from the Loft and to Part 47. And today, yes, I've dived into the loft to dig out a video games console which sparked enormous attention throughout its life and yes, not always for the right reasons. But before this video games console was released, many gamers were keen to see the fruits of Sega's labour and see what they had produced to take Sega into the fifth generation race. And they came up with a 32-bit console named the Sega Saturn. Here is the background story. The 32-bit Sega Saturn landed into the fifth generation of video games consoles in November 1994 in Japan and made its entrance just several weeks before the launch of Sony's PlayStation. However, in North America, the Saturn would not see daylight until the proposed date of Saturday the 2nd of September 1995, nicknamed by some as Saturn Day. And following this announcement, Sony declared their console would be released just days later. However, Sega's proposed date turned out to be something of a bit of a trick, and at E3 in May of 1995, Sega announced the Sega Saturn would be released effective immediately, and in theory it gave the Saturn a great chance of seizing the 32-bit race. And yes, in theory you would think this move was a sensible decision, however upon release the games available for the console were extremely limited, and the only titles available were from Sega itself, as third-party developers for the system had all been working to the timescale of the second of September, which left them in the lurch and also extremely frustrated, let down and angry, as their titles would now not benefit from the first initial sales of the Saturn. To make things even worse, various retailers in North America were outraged as they were not selected to sell the Saturn in the early launch, and several of the big retailers decided to stop selling, remove anything relating to Sega whatsoever, and this continued throughout the life of Sega's Dreamcast in the next generation. And that's not all, as there were even issues for developers as they struggled to get to grips with the two CPUs and the complex graphics hardware. The Sega Saturn's life was certainly tarnished with a sticky start, but even with all this said, the Sega Saturn is one of the most underrated consoles ever, and one for any collector to sink their teeth into and scour the enormous catalogue of games to play. Well, I think it's about time we had a closer look. The Sega Saturn's box is plastered in pictures of the Saturn, games, accessories and tons of info in regards to the specification of the console. The first item you see inside the box is the SCART cable, although you can pick up an AV cable for less than £5 to replace it. Next is the power cable, two Sega Saturn controllers and then the console itself. The Sega Saturn comes complete with a power button, reset button and eject button and towards the back of the console is the cartridge import slot which is used for either a GameShark cartridge or a backup RAM cart and I think there was even a modem adapter too. On the back of the console there is an AC import, an AV out port and a communication connector which was commonly used for linking two Sega Saturns up together. On the opposite side there is a Flap, which when opened reveals a 3 volt lithium battery which on the odd occasion will need to be replaced as they tend to die and without the battery you can't save your video game data unless you have a RAM cartridge plugged into the cartridge slot. And behind the battery there is an adapter port which can be used to plug in an MPEG adapter so you can watch and play music CDs, CDGs and CDEGs. If we now take a look at the Sega Saturn controller which is actually the Model 2 version as the first model model was much larger, however this version is very slim and light and comes complete with a D-pad, start button, X, Y, Z, A, B, C buttons and L and R buttons on the top. And the controller simply plugs into the front of the system and we can now have a look at the Sega Saturn in action. Well, to give you a bit of a glimpse into the workings of the Sega Saturn, I'm going to be playing one of my all-time favourite games for the system, Sega Valley Championship, which was ported onto the Sega Saturn in 1995 from the arcade, and although the graphics have been stripped down for the Sega Saturn, it's still a really fun game to play. 
The main menu comprises of six options. Arcade, which is an exact representation of the arcade version. Time Attack, where you can practice to your heart's content in setting your best lap for each of the tracks. And there's a two player mode where you can play against a mate or a foe. Or why not adjust various car settings? Or why not even check out your lap times? And finally, there's a really neat options menu where you can adjust all sorts of little knickknacks. Well, we're just here for the main game and selecting the arcade version is as easy as slipping in a coin into the arcade machine and playing as you select your car and literally you're on your way. No training tips, how-tos or crazy video clips, it's just all about simple, clean, fun racing. Sega Rally Championship really captures the heart and feel of any rally with its tight, tricky, sharp corners, great looking tracks, scenery, road conditions and the way the car handles on each of the individual surfaces. Simple instructions from your co-driver gives an extra essence of realism and crowds, checkpoints and position rankings all help as well. Sega Rally may not be the biggest game for the console, but it's a fantastic game for popping in and bringing back some superb memories. After the fantastic 16-bit era that Sega quite clearly enjoyed, the Sega Saturn was a rather dull and dreary point in Sega's lifespan with a sticky start and end. The Sega Saturn never really seemed to get a grip on sales and inevitably failed to capture the audience the Sony PlayStation and the Nintendo 64 were quite clearly picking up. However, the Sega Saturn, in my opinion, is a super console to collect for, and even with all the bad press that the console had thrown at it, there are hundreds of great titles to collect and dive into, such as Virtual Cop, Virtual Fighting, Sega Rally, Nights Since Dreams, Super Mario Man, and those are just naming a few. I've only touched the surface of the Sega Saturn and what it has to offer for you, but I've really hoped that you've enjoyed this mini insight into a very interesting, an intriguing console. Well, that's just about it for me for today, but I'll be back shortly with a new review. So take care, have a great week, and I'll see you soon.